Hello, Melissa here. Today I want to show you the tools and equipment I use in my little craft room. So stay tuned and I'll go over my collection here. But first, if you don't wear glasses, you should probably get a pair of protective eye goggles. Seriously though, you don't want to be hit in the eye by any flying projectiles. You don't want the OSHA police on your butt, so... PPE is very important, even with jewelry making. Two pairs of chain nose pliers is handy to have. I have a thicker pair. It's great for the thicker, heavy gauged wire. My other pair is much thinner, and it's great for small details and working with very fine, smaller gauged wire. But I have to tell you, if you're just starting off and you buy a pair of um, cheaper tools from a craft store or something, they're not going to have a small tip. They're going to have a thicker tip. These tools I'm using now are, are a bit of an upgrade. Here's one of my curved tips. That's one of my starting tools. Here are my flat nose pliers. I use these with my square wire since they have a broader surface area. Next to my round nose pliers. These are essential for making loops and wrap loops and swirls and stuff. For example, I'll show you how I start making a swirl with my round nose pliers and then I use my flat nose pliers to continue that motion. So I started off here with a simple little loop and I keep twisting it around but that gets hard to do. So then I grab it with my flat nose pliers and just gently millimeter by millimeter just twist it around. You make a swirl as large as you want. I use swirls a lot in my designs as you'll see in the future when I make new videos. So don't forget to subscribe. Another must-have is your flush cutters. You're not going to cut wire without them, but make sure they're flat on one side so you have that nice flat angle. This is an old pair. You're going to go through a lot of cutters. This old pair, I think I cut memory wire or some hard wire with it. See all the notches in it? And this one, make sure you don't drop your pliers on the floor, on a tile floor, because the tip will break off just like this one. If you like to string beads, like me, I like to add strung bead components to my jewelry. You're going to need some crimpers. So this is what they look like. And this is a nylon jaw pliers. These are used to uh, straighten wire. You get kinks in your wire. This will take it right out for you. They're really nifty. I've had this pair forever, as you can see. They're pretty gnarly, but they still work, so good to go. Measuring tools are handy to have around. I have my mat, a ruler. I have this flexible ruler from Rio Grande. I think it was free with an order, so that was nice. Calipers are nice to have, too. They're great for measuring stones or measuring your jewelry pieces. See, this cabochon is about an inch, an inch by a little over a half inch here. So, yeah, nifty. Here's my little stainless steel block that I use to hammer wire with. Here's one of my hammers that I use. Flatten one side, the other side makes those little hammer marks. Here's another one. You don't need a block right away. I started off using the side of my hammer and just hammered right off the side of it. It worked great for years. If you want to make rings, you should probably get a ring mandrel. It's tapered and it has notches for what whatever size ring you want to make. And it's round so you can pound them out with a rawhide mallet to make perfect circles. Can't forget about a polishing cloth. I work a lot with sterling silver and copper, so the inside of the cloth has polish in it. it shines them up great. 
some non-essential items. I have some clamps. I just recently got these clamps. These are great for holding my pieces, like tendons and stuff. Just clamp it down, holds the wire tightly. I started off with uh, hemostats. Just grab the wire, holds them tight. They're also great for bead work. I grab the end of the bead wire, keeps your beads on. I just bought this pair of pliers. It's for making bales. It's got six different sizes for bales. I've always used wooden dowels, so this is cool too. Tape is a must too when I make my pendants, especially binding square wires. Painter's tape works great because it's not too sticky. Next is my polishing kit. I have a cordless Dremel. It works great for polishing up my pieces and I can go over that in a separate video. I have some liver of sulfur on hand to oxidize my pieces that are made out of sterling silver and bare copper wire. I'll put that lid back on because it's pretty stinky. Last I want to show you how I tumble my pieces. I just use this cheap plastic rock tumbler. I think I bought it at Michael's. But I had to buy separate stainless steel shot and that's the key to getting your pieces all shiny and polished up. Oh, oh and an old toothbrush is great for polishing up and cleaning your jewelry pieces as well. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video. And I'll see you next time. Have a great day.